Hello, my friends. Olá, meus amigos. A very good morning. A very good Boa. early morning. Aí. There in your home. Casa. In your work, wherever you may be. Well, Bem, I would like, before falar, saying the prayer, um actually, onde, é, antes de before ministering, ministering, ministrar, <laughs> the baptism with the Holy Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus, I would like you to know something that is extremely and gloriously important, that in Acts chapter 19, when Apostle Paul was in the midst of some disciples of Jesus, Paul came there in that church and asked them. Paul did not know them, but asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed in Jesus? And they answered, we have not, not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. <laughs> How wonderful. We have not so much as heard that there is a Holy Spirit. They had no knowledge of the existence of the Holy Spirit, which means information about the Holy Spirit was zero. They only knew of Jesus and of the baptism that John would do in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then Paul asked, into what then were you baptized? And they said, into John's baptism. And then, Paul said like this to them. After that he learned that they were baptized in John's baptism, he said, Paul said like this. He didn't say, he imposed, he laid hands upon those disciples and they received the Holy Spirit. He came upon them the Holy Spirit. Here is written. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. <laughs> Now, the men were about 12 in all. In other words, 12 disciples who were baptized with the baptism that John would do. And not even had, had information, any information about the Holy Spirit, not even about the existence of the Holy Spirit, but they received the Holy Spirit. So what was the secret here for them to receive the Holy Spirit? The secret is that, first of all, they had their heart open. They were ready to receive what Paul had to give. It's what happens to you. You are there early in the morning, you just woke up, just for this prayer, you waited for this moment, and then you are ready to receive the Holy Spirit. You are ready to receive the Holy Spirit. But what it lacks? It lacks the laying on of hands. In other words, I have no condition to lay my hands on you to receive the Holy Spirit physically, but I have, by faith, 
And by faith, all things are possible. It's possible for us to be together now in one single faith, in one single spirit, one single heart. And it's what is happening. It's what is happening. We are together, united. And what am I going to do? I'm going to place my both hands over my mobile phone and you will also place your head. You're going to stick your head on your mobile phone as if you were my hands. And you will receive the Holy Spirit now. Do you believe? Do you believe? Then, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I lay hands here on my mobile phone as if I was placing my hands on your head in this moment. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I ask you, O oh Lord Jesus, make your spirit to come down upon these people now, that they may be filled of your presence for your glory, that your name may be sanctified in their lives, that your kingdom may grow on this earth, and your will may be done on this earth as it's done in heaven in this life, as it's done in heaven, in this house, in this family, as it's done in heaven. Receive the Holy Spirit, my dear friend. In the authority of the name of the Lord Jesus, I say this, receive the Holy Spirit now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. That's it. That's it. What about now? Pay attention. Close attention. The Holy Spirit came down upon yourself. Even though you may not have spoken in tongues and prophesied. Pay attention. Now I'm going to tell you what happened to me. How was my baptism with the Holy Spirit? And you're going to know exactly what is happening with you. On the day that I had my personal encounter with the Lord Jesus, I thought that because I was not living a secular life, a life anyhow in the world, so I thought that I didn't have that much of sins. But when the Holy Spirit convinced me convinced me of my sins, I was scared. And then I saw hell. Literally, I saw hell. And then I asked, who can save me? And then the Holy Spirit showed me Jesus. And Jesus, with his arms wide open, received me. And on that moment, all my sins were completely washed away, removed, and I stayed without guilt. And then I received the seal of God, the Holy Spirit. But I did not know. I didn't know it. 
Eu não sabia. Why? Por quê? Because I did not speak in tongues. I didn't prophesize. I only know one thing. That I had the certainty, full assurance that he had visited me. He had visited me. I had this assurance. This is a personal thing. And only him can do that. Only the Holy Spirit can confirm inside of you that you receive the Holy Spirit. No one else. So if you speak in tongues or not, it doesn't matter. What is important are not the tongues, neither for you to prophesy. What is important is for you to have the Holy Spirit. He is who is important. He is who is important. Very well. I don't know how long has passed from that moment. I don't remember. But I kept on seeking the Holy Spirit on meetings. I, I would do fastings because I didn't think that I have the Holy Spirit. Why I didn't think that? Because I didn't speak in tongues. But I was not instructed upon that situation. I simply believed. Well, I didn't speak in tongues, so I didn't have the Holy Spirit. But inside of me, the fire of God will burn, will burn, was burning, the spirit of faith. And this was enough that I will keep myself in the faith. And I was seeking, seeking, seeking the baptism that I have already have received. And months had passed, maybe even years, until one day that I was no longer worried on speaking in tongues. I wasn't concerned about a thing. I went to the church, and in the morning, the bishop said to all the people, lay hands on the people that are in front of you and say a prayer for them. And then we stood up and we lay hands on those who were in front of us. As there was nobody behind me because I was the last in line. So I lay hands on the people and when I started to pray, I was only speaking in tongues. I was scared, I was spooked because I was very happy, so happy because I was speaking in tongues. But naturally I spoke, I didn't feel emotions, I didn't feel like a, a pleasure. Anyway, that sensation of a fuss, no, I was conscious. And from that moment on, I keep on speaking in tongues at any time. So, dear friends, do not worry with the tongues. Neither with the prophecy. The prophecy is the word of God. Do not worry. Worry on walking uprightly before God, on obeying his holy word. The rest, God is going to do that. The gifts are from the Holy Spirit. The fruits are from the Holy Spirit. When we receive the Holy Spirit, He gives us the fruits and the gifts. It's a gift of His. Now, do not base your life, don't base the baptism with the Holy Spirit with the tongues. Because when people worry about speaking in tongues, they forget the most important, which is the Holy Spirit. It's the same when Jesus said, what is more important, the offering or the altar that sanctifies the offering? You are the offering. And the altar is the Holy Spirit. He comes upon you. Did he accept you? Are you sure that he accepted you? Are you certain that he came upon you? Do you know that? You have conviction of that? You will see him from this moment on and you're going to see the difference in your life. For instance, I don't need, neither the pastor, neither nobody needs to say, this dress that you are wearing, it's not appropriate. This hair that you are cutting in this way, 
this diet or hair, this excessive, this vanity. None of that we need to teach you. Because the Holy Spirit himself will convince you to dress in a proper way. In a way that you will not put to shame the name of the Lord Jesus. Quite the contrary, you're going to sanctify his name through your conduct, through your life, through your behavior, social behavior with other people. You're going to see the difference from now on. This is what is important. If by any chance, you say that you receive the Holy Spirit, spoke in tongues, but you keep on living in prostitution, you keep on living in adultery, on lies, on stealing, on corruption, you keep on sinning. You know when you sin, the person knows that they are sinning. So, if this happens, it's because I don't have the Holy Spirit. Because he who has, he who receives the Holy Spirit naturally, without anybody demanding or imposing, they stop drinking, they stop smoking, they let go of their addictions, they let go of everything that is not good and start living a life of sanctification to the name of the Lord Jesus. They sanctify the name of God, of their Father here on earth, with their conduct, upright conduct. This is the Holy Spirit. They are not forced, they are not obligated, it's not the church that will impose it. No, you can't cut your hair, you can't do this. <laughs> You can't remove the hair from your legs, or you can't, or you can use, wear long or short dress, or long or short trousers. Anyway, he will tell you, he will guide you on what you have to do. But don't, don't we have to say that, don't say out there that we need to keep the Sabbath. You're going to know everything that the Holy Spirit, what God wants from you. And you're going to walk accordingly to His will, without being restricted, limited to doctrines and precepts and traditions, customs, human ones that have nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. Did you understand, dear friends? When the Holy Spirit possess ourself, so He convinces us on what we have to do and what we should not do it. He convinces us. Amen? Amen? <laughs> so, rejoice, you who are there, who has the Holy Spirit, who now the penny dropped. Wow, now I know what I have to do. Now you know what you have to do and what you should not do. This is the doctrine in the universal church of the kingdom of God. So, nobody in the universal church of the kingdom of God impose laws, customs, or say that you cannot do this or that. The universal church of the kingdom of God is like a emergency room to receive those who are hurt, those who are suffering, those who are tired, people that are overloaded with sins, people that are really living a rubbish of life. It's for those people. And you who now have the Holy Spirit you're going to get together naturally with those who are working for the cause of our Lord Jesus Christ, that His kingdom may be increased in this world through your life. So you now will know what you have to do. Your life is in the hands of the Lord Holy Spirit 
who is the Lord Jesus in spirit inside of each one of us. God bless you, and until tomorrow, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God.